my name is Jen. My name is Phil. And welcome to our 625 square foot apartment in Brooklyn. So I've been living in this building for a little over four years and uh, we moved into this specific space three months ago now. And I've been the super of the building for a few years. So I'm kind of like familiar with the space and we were able to change a lot of things. Phil's parents came into town to help us and we literally did four 12 hour days of nonstop work where we did pretty much every room except for the bedroom. And then the bedroom came like a few weeks ago. We finally got it all tied up and put together. The priority was, yeah, finding a layout that allowed for like a, an office space as well as a living space, kind a of. A music space. A music space, yeah. <laughs> and a way to not take away from like, I think this is a really beautiful fireplace and mantle and stuff. And so like, how do we keep all the elements without being too cluttered. We struggled a lot right when we first moved in, figuring out if we wanted a TV and if, where, if we did, where we were gonna put it. Um, I refused to have it up here, so that limited things greatly, and you can see there is no TV, so. There was discussion about like the couch facing this way, um, yeah, maybe and kind of separating things. like a, uh, an office space and then like a living space, uh, mm -hmm. living room area. But then I didn't know where I'd put my keyboard and my synth. And I work from home most of the time, so I kind of needed like a real office. And then we just eventually decided this, which was sort of the most obvious layout of having the couch here, was the best one. So. Yeah. I'm a Broadway stage manager. And I'm a musician, but I also work in tech. I would say the first decision we made was a blue wall. This blue, I honestly saw a picture on the internet of uh, someone with posing with all their plants. And I messaged them and I was like, what color blue is that? Because it looks so great. Um, and now here's Phil posing with all of his plants yeah. against a blue wall. So if I, you can message me if anyone wants to know the color. Um, <laughs> but that's what you have to do to find out. Your DMs are open, uh, yeah. they say. <laughs> you know, the rug was chosen after that. I thought like, yeah, this would tie, the copper would tie it all kind of together. And then I found this pillowcase, which had, incorporates all the colors in the, in the living room. As everyone knows, a mantle is a great place to put things that you don't know what to do with. <laughs> this is an incense holder that I made. Uh, I found this rock in a creek and drilled a hole. And the hole honestly is too big, but it's just, you gotta like balance the incense. This mirror also left here by a previous tenant. I like the fact that it's cracked. I don't know that you are the biggest cracked fan, it's but- um, okay. We all make our compromises. But, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, more room for plants. And then you plants. guessed it, more plants! Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, this little spoon came from my grandmother. I'm obsessed with this candle. Uh, also by, left here by a previous tenant. But it smells, it's really... <laughs> I promise we do more. pay for things. We don't just take them from other people. Yeah. And then I guess, so the fireplace was obviously yeah. at one point a working fireplace. And since then has been boarded up. And every time I tell Phil, we should just open it up and see what's in there. Yeah. He's like, we will. We no, it's definitely do that. scary. It's definitely scary. <laughs> um, I, I never want to open that. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it's airtight. Part of the reason I didn't want a TV on the mantle was that I already had owned this piece of art that I wanted to put here because it fits perfectly. Um, and it's by an artist, John Carborn. He's based in London. The bookshelf's kind of one of the main things in this room. And I just asked my dad if he could cut some boards and bring them because we don't have a backyard or anything so it's kind of a pain to cut wood. He just retired recently so I guess he was bored and he instead of just cutting the wood he like did everything. I think he took two different planks of wood and yep. glued them together. So if you see the two dots and um, he, those are two separate yeah. planks. And he, he built a like yeah face plates and stuff all around. So one thing that was important to me was having a comfortable couch. When I do work from home occasionally, this is really my workspace, is the couch. Some people might say this isn't the comfiest couch, to be <laughs> honest. But if you like a firm couch, you'll like this couch. So this couch was from All Modern, and it was about $1,000. Yeah. It was the most expensive thing of, by, by far, far of anything we bought. But yeah. it was important to us to have a very quality couch, something that would last for a really long time. And if we ever do get pets, which we think we want to do eventually, a velvet couch is actually perfect for animals because they can't really scratch it up. So. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. We'll we let you know. We'll that, get back yeah. to you. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the living room is this bookcase with the mirror behind it. So it was Phil's idea to put the mirror behind the bookcase. 
and it just makes the room feel bigger it, even with a bookshelf and all these books and plants covering it it does add i feel like a good dimension to the space we keep the bulk of our shoes in our closet but we also for our everyday shoes have this nice little the shoe cubby and that's a nice way to keep our shoes off the floor and organized and to give it a small footprint is important to us because there's as you can tell not a lot of space yeah. by the door <laughs> we got four shoe cubbies this is like our our junk drawer essentially and we thought it would blend into the wall a little bit and kind of be hidden by the the desk and the bookshelves and these were from Ikea and a great purchase. Another cool detail of the space are these little shelves on either side of this doorway. They're lovely and we have our plants. Eventually we'll probably get more plants for the bottom. Um, but now they'll just house our empty pots. Our empty pots, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think those, those are fun. This is uh, the dining room. Um, in my previous three years of living in this building, I did not have a dining room table or a kitchen table. Um, or so any kind of table. It's exciting <laughs> to have a table. This room originally, when we moved in, was all black, including, wow, very, very dark green. The first step <laughs> was painting it white. It, it was like three coats of paint on every surface. We had to do a primer and then three coats mm, yeah, on top um, of that. To, to go over the black, but yeah. much brighter in here, for sure. Because we could have done other things with this room. It could have been the music room, but I think it, we were adamant at having like a space where we can just sit together and eat. The unique thing about our apartment is that there are actually three different apartments on this one floor that all share a kitchen and a bathroom. I would say a lot of this room is things to make it more convenient for us to not always have to run to the kitchen. So we have our coffee cart over here, our bar cart that has our mini fridge. We put like our milk in there, beer, that kind of stuff. We have our little water cooler so we can, we don't have to go to the kitchen every time we want water. We have mugs down here. We have, you know, our bar glasses. We have water cups. The best thing is our little collapsible dish rack. I know everyone's tuning in to see stuff like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, you know, you can just like set it here, put your we, dishes on here. Yeah, fill it with dirty dishes, take it to the, yeah. to the kitchen to uh, wash them, and then she conveniently lives right above the fridge. We found the table and chairs off Craigslist, and I believe this is uh, West Elm, and this is... All um, modern. All modern yeah. or something. But they were a set. They were a set. Or it was like three... On Craigslist, it was like 300 bucks. 300 something, bucks, so. yeah. I think the other furniture thing is this rug. How did we? I totally don't remember how we came to, to this rug. You don't? No. Um, you wanted it. Oh, great. Yeah. This, <laughs> was, a, this was a no compromise. Um, I remember it vividly. we thought it was fake. I looked closer and it's actually real, so feel kind of guilty about it. Um, if my vegan parents are watching this, it is fake. Yeah. And I think it ties like the chairs together. I think it goes well with the wall that we have. Yeah, you were literally randomly one day were like, we gotta I paint this I remember this vividly. You were at the desk. I was sitting on the couch, like writing an email. And then I looked up and said, terracotta. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then that day I painted it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I ran to the store, got the paint, and still painted it. This is our only closet in the apartment. So we have shoes over here. This is my little workout station down there. More shoes, um, some clothing, and just kind of like, you know, all kinds of storage things. Um, on this side, we have Phil's shoes. We have Phil's clothes. We have some jackets. There is this space up here that we painted shut because it was kind of creepy, but uh, we regret it. We might at some point <laughs> open it up and like store, I don't know, I have like camping supplies and hiking stuff. So in, in the other room, it was very much like original artwork and like, you know, very big, bold paintings. And we kind of looked at everything we had left and we were like, okay, this feels like a gallery wall. We also nicknamed it our room of achievement because it kind of shows off some of the works that we've done. So like these posters here are all from shows that I've done. Um, and then here, like we have Phil's bottler poster. That's his band. Show poster is a, a record of mine. Yeah, um, that's his record that came out recently. So we have yeah. that framed. We have um, this is cool. This is um, uh, this is a costume rendering from a, a show I did, a national tour. 
because this building is old, um, we had to fix up a lot of stuff. One of the things that um, we repaired is this floorboard. Uh, unfortunately, I bought the wrong colored stain, so you can really tell which one it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was literally a hole in the floor. Uh, but with this garbage can, you know. You can barely uh, tell. And then this is actually another light fixture that was left by previous tenants. Yeah. If you look at the ceiling, it's like the weirdest way of installing a light fixture ever. <laughs> but you don't really notice it because the ceilings are so high, but it's like literally... It's, yeah. I don't know how safe it is, but... When we, yeah. uh, when this room was painted black and this light was here, we used to call it the police interrogation oh, light. Oh you could swing the light and sit underneath it. <laughs> and it was like you were being interrogated. Uh, but um, now yeah. it's a little, it's a little softer. This is our bedroom. As you walk in, you can see this is rather odd shaped archway. I feel like it is like all old buildings, all these idiosyncrasies. What's nice about it though is technically this is, I guess you would say a railroad apartment, but because we have this archway and then the rest of the room goes back, it really does feel like a separate room. We um, don't get a lot of light back here. Yeah. So anything that could that could help us. That's part of the reason too for our like mirror obsession is just to try to make the space feel bigger, but also bounce um, some light off. Yeah, I don't know how well it works, but it probably works. This rug is from West Elm, and we got it at the West Elm outlet. So what was normally like a five hundred dollar rug, we got for like two hundred. So highly recommend that because again, we're in an old building. Um, the lights don't actually work. We don't even have light bulbs in there. We don't get any l lighting overhead. So we're really making do with our two lamps over here. These reading lights obviously normally would be focused downward, but uh, because we don't get a lot of light in here, we just have very, them very upward so very, we can get as much light in the space. I feel like we need gargoyles on either yeah, side on the top. Yeah, and they would like reflect their shadows on the ceiling. Yeah. This used to be one giant apartment before it got broken up into our apartment and then the two other apartments. And so this used to be just open French doors that went into the next room. But because now there's someone there, there's some drywall in between and then there's some soundproofing. We wanted to showcase kind of the, the molding up here. So I thought a good way to do that would be to put wallpaper in it so you can kind of see the outline around it. It's kind of like you're looking out your window into the jungle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> That's what we were going for. Yeah, well, you know. It's, I, I love um, it. Over here, there's, I, I don't know, it's like instead of an accent wall, because we're obsessed with accent walls, we did an we accent. Want to shake it up. An accent room divider. Um, <laughs> you can, there's nothing stored back here, but normally it's kind of like this and you've got a little hiding spot. Um, Feld loves to, to scare me when yeah, I get no. home. <laughs> um, but you can store stuff. Uh, it's creepy because you're like staring at the bed. Uh, I'm just picturing a third person. Um, but uh, yeah, you can store stuff. I wanted um, a nice way to showcase my my jewelry. So it's just, we found I found this thing off of Etsy like maybe seven years ago. And it's a nice way to display all the necklaces. Here, this was this is my favorite piece of artwork. This was my pandemic hobby that I haven't touched since 2020. I thought you were talking about the smoke detector. The smoke detector, Which isn't it we stunning? Did just hang, so. yeah. This dresser I really like. I got this a few years ago off of Wayfair. It was about six hundred dollars. And again, this this was another piece that like a quality piece that I was like, I'm gonna keep this for a minute, I think. For storage in this room, I kind of keep all my clothes in here. My bedside table, also left here by a former tenant. And then Jen just has a more standard uh, nice bedside stand table yeah, nice over. Stand over there. Another nifty storage space that we have is underneath our bed. We have some cubes that house like, you know, our off-season clothing that have some of your hiking and camping gear. Um, extra bedding, extra towels, that kind of stuff, duffel bags, just kind of like random catch-all things. We just kind of hide under the bed. This is the kitchen. Here's the kitchen. We <laughs> did a fair amount of stuff here. We repainted it. Uh, this used to be a like a metal island. Um, it's island. like a metal countertop. We painted these cabinets to match the island. Um, they were incredibly difficult to paint. We pulled all the doors off, um, but there was, I don't know, like 50 years of 
of a kitchen grease on them or something. Oh, it's gross. Um, and I, <laughs> I started painting the, the actual, not the doors, but the rest of the cabinets and like had a panic attack because it looked so horrible. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I just ruined this completely. Um, <laughs> luckily just like three coats and it's good. Um, just three coats, no big deal. Yeah, we replaced- Simple. We replaced the hardware too. We painted the inside of the cabinets white first. And that itself took a few coats as well because it was that, that greasy, creamy yellow. And then we just added some peel and stick tiles as like a backsplash in, in these cabinets and as well a backsplash against our pot and pan holder. So there's not a ton of space in here, but we kind of tried to make it set up conveniently. So like good counter space immediately next to the stove. Lots of pots and pans that are easily accessible. The sink is like my favorite sink in the world. It is so huge. It's huge. Uh, and it's two basins. It's like an industrial like kitchen sink. Um, we don't have a dishwasher in this apartment. So this is our little dish rack. I mean, look at this, all this room for activities. It's a bummer if you have people over to try to be cooking in here and then like everyone else is way far away and I'm just like here by myself. Um, and you can't really fit too many people in here either. So yeah, it's not really a hangout spot. We hang out in here, we do um, but here. that's about it. Bill likes to cook and I like to sit on that stool and drink wine while he cooks. We also added uh, these little spice racks against the wall, a very, compact, easy way to, to hold all of our spices. And uh, the ceilings are pretty cool in yeah, here. The They're different. Um, it's like, I don't know, like tin ceiling or something. Um, so it's kind of cool, original detail. It's and the floors too. I mean, the, the tile floor is so cool. And it's, but the, I would say an issue we have is it's really hard to keep clean. It gets yeah. dirty so quickly. And even after we clean it, it still kind of always looks a little dirty. The subway tile, you know, that's, we weren't just trying to be trendy. That's it was, yeah, this was original subway tiling, um, which is cool though. Uh, thinking about lovely. doing under lights under here. So um, we can inspect our dishes But more haven't carefully. gotten to it yet. Cause it's kind of dark in here at night still. Um, it's nice too to have this window. It's, yeah. I think for Phil, I mean, you can speak to this, but you are very much adamant about a kitchen with a window yes. to get some natural light in yeah. while you well, cook. Nothing, yeah. I mean, everything with a window, but... Well, it's just like my fantasy of like getting up and making like eggs and an omelet in the morning. And looking out the window. Yeah, and it's got to have the sun in that fantasy. Like, what a great fantasy. Yeah. I would like to say that the bathroom was my vision more so than Phil's. With the tile that's already here, with the black and the white, for me, something, the, an idea that had come to me was Art Deco and, and also like combining that with like the traditional pink of like what a New York bathroom typically is. And so this was all white, all the walls above the tile that we then painted pink. Again, so the tile could kind of pop off of and differentiate from the walls a little bit. We added these shelves in here, again, kind of with like an Art Deco feel in mind. We added this towel rack, um, something that I'm, I really like in, in the vein of peel and stick. We added this fun little peel and stick in the bathroom. The, it's definitely an old medicine cabinet, so anything to, to cover that personally was nice. These are our hooks for our towels that we added in, but this is actually a window. This used to be a window back when the building was first built and then I have no idea when they did this but they covered it up and now it's it's a wall but we still have the the molding around it and the the window you can tell that this was a window you know with our shower we changed out our shower head so it's a little rainfall with a little separate guy and this is our spacious bathroom you can just run laps around it I think the way that I envision pretty much all these spaces um, before actually creating them is like concocting these these fantasies of, of what I want the space to be like as I'm experiencing them. And so in this space, it was really like laying on a thick, nice rug and like looking up at the ceiling late at night with like dim lights and just listening to like chill jazz records with like incense burning. So that at least for me is like kind of what this space, so like I wanted like a dark, rich blue wall. I wanted like 
plants and I wanted to be laying on the floor, like looking up and seeing plants. For me personally, this is the first home I've really created ever because um, I either lived with friends or in, uh, or moved into apartments that were already pre-established. And, you know, with my, my job, I used to tour a lot. So I was actually living on the road for a couple of years. And so being able to, to A, even create a space, but to create it together mm -hmm. has been amazing. Yeah, I think I have learned, like I, I think originally I was like, oh, like I'm cool with anything. Like I'll let Jen decide everything. And, then <laughs> and I realized it was that, not like, that. <laughs> that. Like I actually have very strong opinions about a lot of the way a lot of things are laid out, um, which I didn't realize until I was like, uh, but we were actually like really good at compromising, I think, yeah. um, and communicating, so. We're very good. I always joke like when we fight, our fights are always like, oh, but in, with your perspective and your perspective, like we always see the other person's point of view to a fault sometimes. Yeah. It seems like the song is a communication skills. Yeah, yeah, for I mean, sure. That's yeah. a great way of putting it. By challenging them. And then <laughs> making us learn how to communicate better. I, I mean, I so. think our like living together has only improved our relationship. Yeah. We really like spread us a lot closer together, mm -hmm. both physically and emotionally.